hydrogen. So you will get confirmation on your side to continue recording as you're watching this later on. My name is Brenda Kasuva and my contact information is displayed. Let's make sure that we are connected on social media for further discussions. We are here thanks to our sponsor. He will be joining us towards the end, Marvin Reese from the title company CLA, title and escrow. He'll be joining us towards the end of the session. So today we are talking about open houses. And with open houses, the flow is where I'm going to assume. And as we go along, if you want to add on what you do different and how you do your open houses, please do share. The mindset here is you are the listing agent or you are an agent that is affiliated with the company that has a listing com that, that has a listing up for sale. If, for example, I am going, let's assume this is not my listing, I am going to be conducting this open house for this particular agent this weekend, the listing agent or you have already taken the time to go already to the bride MLS for you to schedule the open houses and it will show up saying what time you're going to do the open houses then all of that information is normally going to be populated to the websites that gather the information from the MLS. So if you're going to be doing an open house for someone or you're doing it yourself, then definitely you want to make sure that you are able to go ahead and schedule it as soon as possible. Alethea, oh, I'm sorry that you're feeling that way. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With the open houses is, so you've scheduled your open houses. Hopefully you're going to put it in the MLS. I wanna say Wednesday, Tuesday's good enough. Thursday, you're kind of pushing it. Why? Because you want all the different websites that are borrowing information from the MLS to have time to update their stuff and for it to be presented online in case your future buyer is going to be checking out the information online. You've scheduled it. The next step, so this is the property I'm going to be using for today's exercise. Probably what you're going to do, this is all in sight. You pick and choose which one is going to work for you. Here in the MLS, this thing that looks like a notepad is your disclosures provided by the listing agent. Obviously, if you're the listing agent, you should have that information. It is in there. So what you might want to do is definitely check it out if you're doing the open house on behalf of another listing agent. I'm checking it out so that if there are any questions that might come from the consumers who are checking out the open houses, since it's not my listing, I have some of that information. This is presented as 15 pages. You can print it and have it available at the property because as you know, the buyers might have those questions and if they're ready to write an offer, you have provided that information to them. So I have the disclosures at hand during the open house. The next thing I will have is definitely from the realistic commission point of view is going to be the open house notice. This is something that we need to have displayed conspicuously somewhere, whatever that word conspicuously means to you is what, if I walk into that open house, I need to be able to read it and find it somewhere where I'm able to pause and read it. Whether you put it on the door, whether you put it on the table that where people are signing in, whether you put it again on somewhere as they go upstairs, when they go to the kitchen, they need to be able to read this information, letting them know that if they share some information that they think is confidential, you're not representing them. You are representing the seller. 
similar to you walking to a car dealership. That person is not representing you, the buyer of the car. That person is representing the seller of the car. So this is where we are just making sure that they understand that. Where would you get this document outside of your broker provided contracts program is going to be from the Real Estate Commission website. I just did an online search, Maryland Real Estate Commission. This is where you would go, forms and fees, and then you will be able to access that particular, oops, that particular document on that page. So the open house disclosure sign is something that you need to have when you're doing open houses. Shameless plug, Greater Baltimore Board of Realtors does have it on a clear stand that you're able to purchase. And the clear stand does also give you a slot where you're able to put the business cards. So it's one of those things where if you buy one or two, because you can always move it around when you're doing different open houses for people. So you are able to purchase them from GBBR. I don't know what the cost is. I'm gonna assume it's definitely less than $10. It would be surprising if it was more than $10. So you have that. So, so far, if there are questions or feedback, hopefully you guys know that you can always stop me, ask questions, put them on chat, but let me check in. Questions so far? Um, yes, question. Does, how much does, does it cost on the, the, um, the website you just uh, sent, showed us? Where you can sit, where it says forms and everything. Oh, this one you can print it out yourself. There's there's no cost. What I was talking oh. about is like they have um, how will I describe it? Sometimes it's better if you see it. They have like a clear like the plastic. Yeah. Thing. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. So you oh, for you that was that is less than ten dollars. You're saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that and way, the way it works, it's like a clear stand and then it has like a business slot of, I'm sorry, business card slot where you're able to put your business cards. Mm -hmm. If you decide to print it out yourself, let me make sure that I do my part to make sure we, we are on the same page. If you decide to print it yourself, wonderful make sure that you print it out in color. It has to be printed out in color. So if you don't have a colored printer, this is where you need to get it printed in color. You can just print one or two because again, you can always use it for different open houses. Okay, so the form again in review that's found on the Realistic Commission website under forms and fees, I probably will have printed out the disclosures of the property, or at least you have access to them so that when people are asking questions, you have some answers that are provided on the disclosures. If they're not in the MLS, that's a great opportunity definitely to connect with the listing agent and have them provide that to you. If again, you're doing the open house on behalf of someone, which is a great way for you to not only practice how you speak to the public, but also to potentially, it is possible potentially for you to capture some business there. So uh, open houses are a great way for you to both sides to show potential sellers from the neighborhood, how you conduct yourself and then also potential buyers as well. However, remember that you're there to what? Make the house available for that specific seller. So you're not trying to, you have to have that etiquette and remember that, you know, you're, you're trying to sell that house that you're doing the open house for, not trying to sell other houses or to really be very blatant that you're there to capture buyers. So hopefully let's make sure that it's not blatant that the reason why you're doing the open house should be you're trying to sell that house that you're conducting the open house for. What else do I need to do? Oh yeah, 
The other thing that if you're doing the open house for a listing agent in your company, ask them if the seller has given permission for you to speak of other properties. So in the listing agreement, the seller and the listing agent will have the discussion where the seller will decide whether to give consent or not for you to speak of other properties. What is the conversation of other properties? Buyers coming in, they have seen other signs in the neighborhood and they're asking, what's the story about that one, dear agent? So this is where you need to know whether you have permission to go ahead and discuss other properties or not from the listing agent. If the seller has provided permission, it's still within the realm of your purpose for conducting this open house is on behalf of this specific seller. So I will not be sharing, for example, why that other one is better and so on. It's just basic information. Well, that one is listed for this price. I see that it is already under contract. After the open house, let's connect. If you're looking for houses, I'll be able to help you after this open house. But you cannot start conducting that business at that specific open house. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about, unless there are questions, is why you, the, the tagline of this presentation was RPR. So I am already logged into RPR, unless there are questions already. Okay, so logging into RPR, the website is narrpr.com. If there's someone who has not yet set up the account, when you first go to the website, at the very bottom, it will tell you create an account. All of you have access to it as long as you are a member of the National Association of Realtors. So you already have access to it because you joined your board, your association, whether it's GCAR, Prince George's, Anne Arundel, and so on. I was trying to go to the website before I log in for me to show you where you're able to create your account, but that is taking up my time. So setting up your account, which I can put the instructions of setting up your account or updating your NAR account in the follow-up email. I have logged in to NARRPR.com. And once you log in, your broker information will be there as long as your broker has already set up the account. On here, today's purpose is Brenda, I'm doing an open house. So there's a lot of information that you're able to get from RPR. If you're wondering what it is, it's a great tool for you to use to conduct market analysis, which some of you will call that as a CMA. It's a great tool for you to do research when somebody wants to list their property, you can come in here and do great research and get ready for that listing presentation. It's another great tool for you to share about the market in terms of neighborhood market activity. And that's what I am getting into. There's way more commercial properties are on here. It's nationwide. That means doesn't matter where you are in the country, you are able to pull up information from RPR. We're here for open house discussion. So what I would do is when I log into NAR RPR, then you type in the address here. So for today, I have already done a couple of things up front. So I will pause here and come back to this. What I want to jump ahead and then I'll come back and then I'll find my way back to where I'm going to next is show you three reports that you are able to create from NARRPR for your open houses. Open houses, a lot of times you hear about flyers. All of this, what I'm talking about, you're going to be comparing it with what you already have that you've been provided by your brokerage or maybe what you like from Bright MLS. 
So this is another option. Your broker might already have flyers that you're able to create. This is what you're able to have from the NAR property flyer. So I'm showing you what it looks like, and then we'll come back to how do you get to produce this. This flyer is customizable with the title here. So you can come up with your own title there. Which picture do you want to display is an option as well. It will give them an idea of where the property is located. As I keep scrolling down, it has a summary of the features. And then on the right hand side, this is also customizable. However, it's pulling whatever is in the MLS. So it pulls whatever is in the MLS and then you're able to customize it. Definitely your contact information and picture as you have presented it when you set up your profile. So this is just a one page flyer. It might not be pretty, however, it is something. This is where you check with your broker and see whether they have prettier flyers that you're able to customize where it might have more pictures and more customization. However, this is the one that is produced from NAR. So I might have that one. The next one was the mini report. So the mini report, this is what it offers. I have the address, your company logo is going to be there as well, the picture, and then your contact information, that's page one. Let me see if I can make this smaller. So if this got small on your side, if you're using a phone, tilt it horizontal for you to probably have a better view. Here's what I get. So I have the property address, an aerial view of the property, what it's listed for. If you don't want the report to have the estimated value from this particular product, you're able to hide that. However, I leave it for it to be a conversation as to why is it it's listed for 400 and yet the statistics here showing that the current estimated value is 389 you will have done your research. The good thing is that it gives them a range and also a good conversation to say, hey, this market is crazy. <laughs> uh, statistics right now are usually based on a six month type of a history. Every single day, houses are coming on the market. We're having multiple offers and people are presenting different scenarios that warrants probably the seller to be at that price. If you don't like this particular layout, you have the opportunity to deselect this page. I go to the next page, property photos. Let me know if you have questions so far. So, so far I'll get about two pages with photos. And then this is statistics, giving you property history assessed information in terms of taxes. Price per bedroom, this is just pricing here. Statistics as well. If you don't like this to uh, this type of a page or information, RPR gives you the opportunity for you to deselect. Scrolling down. This is another view, housing statistics. So what we're showing here is what you are able to produce. What you could do now is print four or five, probably more, because nowadays a lot of people are coming to the open houses. And then you have the vendors. I can always eliminate that if I wanted to. So I might end up with about eight pages for this open house that I could print front back, front and back, and then put it in, a, what do you call it? A report cover, the one which has a clear flip, and then um, they can flip through it and it kind of looks like a binder. So that is something that I am able to provide. So the mini property report. Questions, feedback. I've shown the flyer. We've talked about the mini property report. 
Now the next one I'm going to show you is the neighborhood report. So the purpose of this is for you to get a flavor of what the reports look like, and then you will get to decide which one you like better or maybe have all of them. This is the neighborhood report. I did take the time to eliminate some of the pages just for my preference. So let me, okay. Similar to the mini report, it has the housing statistics. Only that this one goes into details, price versus listing. Some of you might like this, some of you might not. Price range of houses sold in that area. Here's where they're giving you an idea as to what's happening in that area. Age of homes in that particular area, neighborhood in terms of zip code. And then it gets into people statistics. So this is where this could be the answering that question of how is the neighborhood, this report can kind of give them a little bit of this information. So this is where we have what's the education level of the people that live in this particular area. I'll check the chat in 30 more seconds. Children age group. All of this is coming and they tell you where the information is coming from if the person asks. Income brackets as well. And that conversation there. And then we have economic statistics quality of life, again, could be too much for some, walkability scores is presented, and then the vendors. Let me see what you have for me. Uh, so Blanca, your question, this, this is going to depend on you, what, what you would like. So Blanca's question is, are these copies just to look at or for people to take? It's gonna be up to you. Now here, picture an open house. Um, <laughs> let's probably present it this way. The open house, I, I don't know if you will have people who are going to pause and have you show them this report. However, could you, again, maybe have it like a, what would I call it? Like a background thing. So if you have your laptop connected to the seller's TV and this is plain like a PowerPoint presentation, why not? I don't know if there'll be people who will pause and take the time to look at it. That's why Brenda would print it out for people to carry it with them. And if, uh, if I'm just going to be calling myself third person, and then if Brenda does, wants to save paper, then how will I find a way for me to get their email address so that I email it to them? So maybe the strategy, marketing strategies that you have few on purpose so that when they are finished, you're like, hey, you know, hey, you want, you want this as an email for you to be able to look at it at your own time? Sure, let me have your email address. This is all up to you. So Blanca, you get to decide. The consumer will not have access to this platform unless you print it out, you email it to them, or you decide to post it on Facebook. Hopefully that helped. Okay, let's now go to Brenda. How did you get these reports? I am going to not like type in stuff because I've already done it already. So what I'm going to show you is picture me doing it. You're on the main page of NARRPR. Right here is where you will type in the address or the MLS number of the property that you're doing the open house for. Now, let me not, let me make sure that I still have the window open that I'm speaking of. Uh, let's see. 
If not, then you will be watching me typing it in. Uh, what was that address? Oops, okay, let me go back. I did this before and looks like it reset for me. Okay. So I'm going to type in the information. So here you're going to enjoy me starting from scratch. So here's the property address. So I typed in the property address and RPR is going to find it because it's pulling information from the MLS. And if it's not in the MLS, then you it is pulling from public data. This is why I thought I would have done this earlier because sometimes the internet doesn't move as fast as we would like. So here's the property information. You're able to take the opportunity to review it. Today, I'm keeping myself on track and making sure I do not start talking about all the other stuff that you are able to do. Please, 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 if this is of interest to you in terms of the product you want to use on a regular basis, I scroll down all the way at the bottom of every single page is going to be a blog. When you click on blog, this is where you're able to get your training a little bit further in terms of what else you are able to do in this particular tool. Today, I am keeping myself on track in terms of what we are doing today. I am going to create a report. So I typed in the address. I'm doing the open house tomorrow or Sunday. I'm going to create a report. And this is where you will see several different types of reports. I'm going to show you where you can start off with the flyer. Here's where you have the property flyer, that one page that I showed you earlier that has the picture, the map, and then the description of the property. So this is report or flyer number one. When I click on it, then this is where I'm given the opportunity to select the pictures. And hopefully we are looking on this side. I'll talk about the right hand side. So this is where you are able to select which picture do you want to show on the flyer. On the right hand side is where you're going to see what do I want to be displayed at the bottom? What information do I want to be displayed at the bottom? You have the choice. However, remember that in Maryland, you need one, which is the company name. So everything else you can deselect. What you need to have in every advertisement is the company full name. Now, obviously, you want your telephone number, your cell phone number. So if you're going to select your cell phone number, make sure that the work phone number, which is your broker number, is also selected. Everything else is optional, but the three that I mentioned would be required on your flyer. The one that must be there is a company full name. If you decide to have your cell phone, then the work telephone number needs to be checked off as well. And that's the broker telephone number. I scroll down and this is where on the left hand side, you're able to customize your flyer. I already did this before to save time. So I already have the headline. You'll be able to select. I believe they give you 150 characters. And then this has already pulled from the MLS, so you can customize that as well. You also have the opportunity to make things bold if you want to, underline, and so on. And then this is where you get your options. Do I want the year built to be displayed or not? Do I want this information to be displayed or not? Whatever is checked off is going to remain on the flyer. The eye gives you direction as well. Do you want to hide it or not? So this is where you're going to make that decision there. And then all I have to do is Either, so here Blanca going with your question before, if the person requests for it, remember you have RPR app on your phone. 
So if the person requests for it, then you can do all this on your phone while you're doing the open house and you can email it to them. So you get their email address and you email it to them. Or if you want to print it out, then this is where this button here that I was um, avoiding was kind of showing every time I was scrolling. So if you look as you scroll, it's asking you, hey, Brenda, do you want to run the report? So yes, if I run the report, this is where it's going to give me the opportunity for me to have it as a PDF, which means I'm able to print it out. Or if I want to access that report and post it on social media, Facebook, I am able to do so. Right now it's generating the report and when it's done, you will hear a doorbell and here's where you keep in track of your reports. That was a property flyer. While it's generating, I am going to quickly go through the other flyers that I mentioned. And while it's generating its report, here at the very top of this page, I am being given a track of all the reports that I have created so far. So this one is being worked on. This one I worked on earlier, that is what I showed you, the neighborhood report. And then this is the mini report. What can I do here? I can download the report again. Okay, so sorry, that's done. I can, good, there's a doorbell. So this is what you're able to do with all of your reports. Your reports are saved for 30 days in this system. And here are your four options. Do you want to download it again? Because now you're doing another open house for the same house next week, or you're doing one tomorrow and then one for Sunday, you ran out of the reports, you want to print them out again. Or do you want to post it on Facebook? The link is good for 30 days. After 30 days, you can always refresh it by clicking on rerun the report. So that was the property flyer. The next thing I wanted to talk, show you was what? The neighborhood report and the mini property report. The steps are going to be the same. I'm going back, acting as if I went to the, let me go back to the beginning. So I'm going back to the beginning to show us how I'm going to do the other reports. I did the property flyer. It's going to be the same steps. Ask questions if you have any. I'll go to clear, I'm sorry, create a report. Same steps that I did for the flyer. I pulled up the property address. On the top right, I clicked on create report. And this time I'm going to select a mini property report. RPR updated to where they're telling me this is how many pages are available. Brenda, if you want to see how all the pages look like, click there. Make your choices as to what you want to include on the first page, the cover page. I'm going to go ahead just for what will I do this time differently? Okay, so view sample. This is where I'm going to show you what it offers. You're being shown what it looks like, 12 pages. I'm clicking to through all the pages for me to have guidance as to what the pages look like. Let's assume you've seen that. This takes a couple of tries. The other thing too I mentioned is to the right of the word of the document is a letter I. That will give you the opportunity for you to click on it and see briefly what it looks like. So that is also another option as well. Whatever you like is what is selected when you're done then you are going to run the report. So I'm not going to do that because I've already done it. All you have to do is to run the report. Questions. So we've covered two. Let's see whether you have any questions before I talk about the next one, the neighborhood property report.
Okay. You guys are quiet today. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is same steps. So I'm just going to do it one last time on the, what is it I wanted to talk about? The neighborhood report. And then I'll show you what you are able to accomplish on your phone as well while you are at the open house. And then when I'm done, I should be having plenty of time for Mervyn to present or to, yeah, to talk to you guys. So this is the last step of doing the neighborhood report. I pulled up the property address and guess what? I'm gonna click on create report. And then I am going to this time select neighborhood report. There are other ways that I could get that report. I'm keeping it simple today. Same steps, neighborhood report is what I'm going to click on. It tells me how many pages are involved. I have the opportunity to view a sample again, and I have the opportunity for me to select or deselect what it is that I do not want. When I'm ready, I click run report. It will do its thing. You'll hear a doorbell and then you will be able to take advantage of the reports. Okay, guys, unless you don't have any questions, let me quickly show you the, is that what I need? Yes. the. What am I talking about? The mobile version. So I am on my phone. It looks like I need to refresh a couple of things. Give me 30 seconds. If you've thought of a question already, please let me know. Hmm. Did I get disconnected? Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah, Lorena, I have a question. When do you need the uh, neighborhood report? Like you print it out, do you need to give it to what to the customer when? Before they buy the house, when they already during the process to buy it, or when or when you already close the uh, when you in the settlement? Yeah, and 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 I'm wondering. Not wondering, I, I'm going to present it back to you and maybe anyone else. If you are buying a house, when, okay, so let's let's put it this way, Blanca, when would you appreciate that report? Because the answer right. to me kind of depends, right? I'm just asking because I got down after settlement myself years ago. That's why I'm asking you now, because I, okay. I, and, they, I didn't know, so. <laughs> yeah, and, what, and you as the buyer, now owner of the house, did you appreciate it? You, you know, what was, your, what was your feedback on that? Well, right now, I wish I should have that before. There you go. But... <laughs> so that's your answer, right? Yeah, that's why I'm asking you, yeah. because I'm like, wait a second, I didn't get that until settlement <laughs> exactly so so to me that gives you your answer but again i'm still going to say it doesn't still negate or stop you from sharing it with people who own the house already right so this is a neighborhood report you get to pick how you're going to use it is your marketing that i'm giving in i'm giving you this information when you come to the open house, wonderful. Is this something that I'm going to give to you when I am going through a buyer consultation with you because you've shared with me what zip codes you're interested in, wonderful. Am I going to share it with you because you are a future buyer who has said, I'm working on my credit, I'm working on saving, but these are the areas that I want to buy in in a year or so. Wonderful. Am I going to share it with your potential sellers to be? And you're going to send it to sellers right now to just let them know about how the neighborhood is? Wonderful. All of these are different, and, and I'm sure there's more. Others can add on as to how you're able to use it. All of these are options. 
at an open house, you're sharing it, right, to the people who are coming in, who, by the way, could include the two sides, somebody who wants to sell their house and somebody who wants to buy. So I'm going to say pick and choose. Use all. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah. Anyone else want to add on? How else would you use the neighborhood report? I shared four. Is there one that you want to share that you can think of you would use it for? Okay, thank you. Let's see, what was I doing? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay, let me look at the chat and then let me get to our PR. I don't see Marvin yet, so I have a couple of seconds to go. You're welcome. Okay, I'm getting messages that I should have seen earlier. Blank, I got yours, you're welcome. I am trying to share my yeah i'm having issues with my internet so i'm not able to cast my phone let me keep trying there you go okay what i'm finishing up with is you are doing the open house people are coming in you have your cell phone, you have your tablet, you have internet access, which on my side, I am struggling with on one side. This side looks good. This side doesn't look good. But Mervyn has joined us. So let me see whether Mervyn, you'll give me about two minutes. Let me see whether this is going to work. If it doesn't, then you are able to download the application. So there you go. This will be quick. So I will be down on my phone just for me to show you. So when I'm looking down, probably let me get this so that it's not in the way of you wondering what I'm doing. So on my phone, I have already downloaded the RPR app. And this is where I went in and I'm pulling in the same property that I'm doing an open house for. I have the property picture. So this is where Blanca with your point of view is, could you somehow then cast this to the owner's TV and have it running? Why not? Here's where I am seeing the information as it showed on the website how much it's listed for, and then everything about the open house here, listing contact information. Down here is where you can do your notes. However, why I'm showing you this is in the example from questions presented earlier, somebody wants you to email it to them or rather you didn't print out the reports on purpose because you want people to have the report on their email because they, you want to get their email address rather. So down here below, and when I say down here on my phone is here. So when I go to reports, this is where any of the reports I have created are gonna be here. If I want to add a report, I clicked on add at the bottom. Sorry, I was not quick enough to show you where I went, but this is where I can click on, this is interesting for me. This is where I can click on mini property report and you get to create the report on your phone. Do I want all custom pages? No. Do I want this page? Yes. Do I want this page? Hopefully you're seeing as I'm going, I'm toggling over stuff here. Yes or no. And then from there, I am going to go next. So this is quickly here at the top, clicking on next. I'm not able to quickly get there. So I click on next. 
I want to download it or I want to email it. All I did there in case you missed that step was toggle over. And then this is where I'm going to put in the person's email address as they are given it to me. I want to make sure that I copy myself so that I have their email address. Marvin, will you be sharing a presentation or just talking? No, Brenda, with the, because uh, I, I probably only have, what, about 10 minutes. So I'll just be talking a little bit to you guys today about wire fraud. Okay. Okay. Good, good, good. So here is the get report. And it has been sent via email. That's all you need to do if you are going to do this at an open house. So Real quick, that was the presentation in terms of how and what you are able to do using RPR for an open house. So we're going to hear from Mervyn and who made it possible for majority of you to be able to attend this on a complimentary session. So go ahead, Mervyn, it's your time. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for allowing me to come in and spend a couple of minutes with you all. And thank you, Brenda, for allowing me to be one of your sponsors. Um, so my name is Marvin Reese. I'm with CLA Title and Escrow. I'm a business development manager for them. And I just want to tell you briefly today or talk to you briefly today about wire fraud. Um, it's definitely running rampant in our industry. Uh, I'm sure you all have heard of it. Hopefully you haven't had any direct instances where it has impacted you, but it, it's something that we need to keep close to the to the to the chest just from the fact that, you know, our, our customers, our buyers are, are sending large pieces of money, whether it's an earnest money deposit, sometimes are being sent in by wire, or more importantly, when cash to close is being sent in by wire, they they have some exposure there. Uh, quite frankly, you know, just to talk a little bit about the anatomy of wire fraud. What happens, and, and especially for us as agents, you know, we, we work off of, you know, Gmail accounts and non-company accounts. That means that they're not secured. So, you know, we're always being compromised, whether it's we're going out, we're clicking on certain links or going to certain sites, et cetera. And what happens, these cyber criminals, they get access to our, our systems and they don't take immediate action. They just kind of sit back and watch and, and follow our activity. And when they find that it's a case where you're getting close to a closing of a transaction, it's when they will come in there and they will sometimes send emails looking like it's coming from you to, to your, your customers. And um, it, they can essentially lure them to send their wire somewhere that it shouldn't be. So the reason that's important and the reason I like to share this with my agents is because uh, we haven't seen a lot of these happen, but there was a case a couple of years back in which, excuse me, there was a case a couple of years back, Fame versus Platinum Realty LLC. This was a case that happened out in Kansas in which there was a real estate agent who had been hacked and the hacker sent her some falsified information for wiring instructions. She then passed that information on to her customer the customer wired that money out and they ended up losing $196,600, uh, you know, where they were making a down payment on a new home. You know, what's interesting about this case is that the court actually held that the broker and the agent were 85% responsible because they had the fiduciary duty of ensuring that accurate information was being passed to their client. And again, you know, so for one, as a real estate agent, you want to kind of stay out of the, you know, get out of the habit of passing wiring information or getting involved in that communication between the title company and the customer. Uh, just because if something goes wrong, it is a precedence out there from this court case that has been set that agents and brokerages can be held accountable. Uh, so I, I like to drive that point home. Uh, that they definitely be careful, but you know it's really simple. Like I said, that the the hacksters, the hackers come in and they they get access to your email and they follow and they watch your movement and then they they send information out on your behalf, which shouldn't happen. It, it's a really simple step. 
And just keep this in mind anytime you're talking to your customers, one very simple step, no matter what type of, because it's all sorts of different techniques they use. It's called social engineering, but they do spoof and fish and they, you know, it's like four or five different techniques that they use, but all of it is that they're trying to psychologically manipulate you into doing something you shouldn't do to get access to your personal information. But the one simple step that I want to leave you all with that you can make sure you tell your customer that will keep them safe in all cases. Anytime your customer is about to send a wire, whether it's for earnest money deposit, whether it's for cash to close, they should always call the title company at a trusted number. Don't go off an email that you receive. Don't go off a text message you receive. Google the title company, find a number that's published for that title company, call them and validate those wiring instructions. You don't want to use the email that's been sent to you because if a criminal, cyber criminal has hacked your email and sent them some falsified information, they're going to have a falsified number for the title company that's directing your customer to them to keep the fraud going on. So if your customer just simply calls the title company at a trusted number, uh, validate those instructions before they hit the send button, all is well. At the end of the day, once they hit that, that button to wire that money, it, it's possible to, to retrieve it or get it back if it's caught early. But what typically happens is once it hits that criminal's account, which is typically onshore, they quickly move it to an offshore account. And at that point, it's unlikely that it's going to be able to be recovered. Uh, so again, I just wanted to touch on that briefly, uh, just off the fact that there's already a precedent set out there where agents and brokerages have been held accountable. And this is something that you can keep, that you can help keep your customers safe with. Uh, real high level, again, we, we have a short time today. I do have a presentation on wire fraud, but we're not going to dive into that with the limited amount of time. Uh, by any chance, do you, um, I guess, have flyers or brochures that, because we are talking open houses, so if you have flyers or brochures, then we can definitely use that as other materials to have at an open house. Yeah, I have flyers and brochures, but not any related to wire fraud. That's always something that we more so use uh, presentation-wise to educate our agents with. Okay. I'll have a conversation with the company to see that would be a, a great flyer to hand out to customers uh, when they're coming in and learning about the, 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 the process, the real estate process and buying a house or coming in an open house to see to right. the literature. Yeah, so I, I'll definitely look into that, Brenda. Yeah, yeah. But whatever brochures you have, could you send them so that when I am sending the follow up, they have that um, as well? I sure will. I have some electronic ones I can send you that you can actually email out. So that'll be perfect. I'll send that to you later later today. Actually, I should be able to get it to you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Questions for Marvin? And it doesn't have to be related to wire fraud, even if you have any general title related questions, anything I can answer for you guys? Maybe uh, when it comes to refinance um, versus buying, how much different is the title? Because you're not doing a transfer from the seller to the buyer. So when somebody is refinancing, mm -hmm. the costs pretty much is what on your side. So our cost uh, for the refinance is a little bit below $1,000. I think it's $980, if I'm not mistaken, for the actual cost to CLA title. But to your point, Brenda, it is going to be much less as far as you don't have a transfer title, so you don't have the transfer and recordation taxes, not to the extent you would as a purchase. With the with the refinance, you do pay some, some recordation stamps but it's the difference of the existing unpaid balance of the mortgage and the new loan amount. So say right now you have a customer who has a, a open balance of 250,000. And when they refinance, the loan amount's now gonna be 260,000. Well, they're only paying that recordation stamps on the 10,000, which is the difference in the unpaid balance and that new loan amount. Uh, and then too, with the 
title insurance is much cheaper because you don't have an owner's policy. The buyer's already gotten that when they purchased the property. Yeah. So it's a lender's policy, and that comes with a reissue rate. So your governmental costs, your insurance policy costs, all of that is significantly less than for purchase. Uh, the title fees are going to be pretty much a static flat amount. Uh, and then you got, let's say, your reissue rate for your insurance policy and the uh, difference of the unpaid balance and the new loan amount. So it's pretty minimal uh, compared to a purchase. Okay, okay. And um, maybe one last one for me. Are you at the point where you are, you the title company, at the point of where you're using the remote notarization system? So we do have capacity to do that. But here's the one thing everybody has to keep in mind with it. For one, it's all about the lender. Uh, like we have the technology and the capacity to do it, but a lender isn't set up to receive electronically signed notes and mortgages and deeds, et cetera, et cetera. Then in most cases, the lender isn't going to allow it. And it's very few lenders out there right now who are permitting that. Now, if we have a case where it's like a seller who's signing out of state or something like that, we can do that remotely as long as, because the seller is only going to have the deed, which has to be recorded. Baltimore City, for instance, we can't record electronically signed deeds. So it was Baltimore and Montgomery. I think Montgomery is allowing it now, but most jurisdictions, the deed can be recorded electronically and they accept one that's been signed electronically. So we could do like a seller uh, pre-signing electronically. But again, on the buyer side, if it's a cash transaction, uh, we could go through and do it. But on most purchase transactions, if a lender is involved, it's probably not going to be an option to do so just because the lender isn't set up to receive that information on electronically. Got it. Okay. Any others? That was it for me. Great questions, Brenda. Great questions. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Marvin, for making this possible. As a final note, we always have takeaways in terms of reviewing what we've done and putting in place accountability or homework, whatever way you want to look at it. What we did today is by looking at the NAR platform. If you don't have an account yet, that's the email go ahead, set up the account, update your picture, update your contact information if you already have it, download it on your cell phone. And a quick check is maybe scheduled to attend an open house tomorrow, next weekend, and play along with it. Then from there, you'll be able to schedule your own open houses and have the reports available. Any success that you are able to share online on my behalf, go ahead and tag me under Brenda, I'm sorry, training with Brenda. I will see you next time, next week's session. I welcome you to come back. It is going to be talking about collecting data using Google Forms, a great segue of open houses as well, because open houses you want to gather people's information. So how are you able to do that? We shall be exploring the platform Google Forms, which is provided by Google. You do need to have a Google account for you to be able to use it. And then the last Friday of the month is where we are going to listen from a presenter recorded talking about how you can close 50 deals in a year. I'll see you next time. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Marvin. You're welcome. Thank I did you. good today. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye.